Hey, Guitar Nerd is here with a video on the first Slitherfang fight for Horizon Forbidden West. In this video, we will be discussing Slitherfang's weaknesses, which body parts to target, and which attacks to watch out for to ensure a smooth victory for the fight. Be sure to stay tuned until the end though for more info on upcoming content, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay. The Slitherfang is weak to fire, frost, and plasma damage and strong against shock, purge water, and acid damage. Unfortunately for us, the only element that we could use right now is frost damage with the sling, but I actually wouldn't even recommend using that if you prefer to save your ammo resources, especially if you find yourself not landing your slingshots up good enough to get Slitherfang into a brittle state at all. Consequently, we can actually ignore most of the machine parts that Slitherfang consists of. Instead, we can purely focus on four body parts in particular with the bow and arrow. The first part we'll target is the metal bite sack, which is the big green container sack located on the chest. Once the sack is destroyed, we can then focus our fire on the purple glow blast canisters that are located slightly lower than the head. Another body part to focus on during the duration of the fight are the sparker canisters located lower on the chest beneath where the sack was originally at. Lastly, we begin to target the shock orb part of the tail once it is exposed in the second stage of the fight. So with that said, let's jump into some gameplay so I can point these parts out to you specifically and provide some tips on which movement cues to look out for when dodging attacks. Although there are multiple targets to choose from, I would recommend focusing on the green chest sack first given that it is an easier target. You can see as I continue to land these shots on the sack that it takes 6 arrows overall in order to have it destroyed, though it may not require as many hits for easier difficulties. Once the sack is destroyed, be sure to run up to Slither Fang while it's on the ground to land a critical hit to deal even more damage. Now that the Metal Bite sack is destroyed, we can focus on the Purple Glow Blast canisters that should now be exposed. To target these more easily, I would recommend waiting until the Slither Fang coils up around the rock column to use your concentration with the bow so you can take advantage of the slow motion sequence to ensure you land your shots more. Just be careful to look out for its lunge attack that he does shortly afterwards though in order to prepare to roll safely out of the way. Once the glow blast canisters are shot off, the next easier targets to hit would be the sparker canisters located lower on the chest or belly region. Although there might be other opportunities to land your shots on these canisters, I still would recommend saving most of your concentration with the bow for when it coils around on the rock column again. Just be sure to move on the leftward side of the field though to actually be able to get a clear view of these canisters when shooting. At this point you should be right around the second stage of the fight where the Slither Fang begins to use its tail as a shock weapon. Thankfully for us we can target the blue shock orb part of the tail to have it removed and then pick it up as a shock weapon to give Slither Fang a taste of its own medicine. Although it is more resistant to shock damage, it definitely still helps and saves resources, so I'd recommend not only using its tail against itself, but also using the spare one that is already laying on the ground nearby from our snake friends that got crushed earlier. Hint, this is why Aloy makes the call out to use the focus to look for something nearby to use. If you run out of healing items though, don't fret, as there are numerous medicinal berries to pick up in the area. And I think as long as you follow the same game strategy here, you should be able to claim victory over Slitherfang in the end, and celebrate by jumping all over its dead body. <laughs> so I hope this video is helpful and may prevent others from spending so many resources, especially on the harder difficulties. Speaking of which, I plan on sticking with the very hard difficulty going forward, so be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more future content like this. Also feel free to use the description below to follow along with my wife and I as we continue to share content for Horizon, Elden Ring, and more relevant games for this year. So until next time, keep dancing over those cold dead robotic bodies my friends. 